So, as uh, you remember, we've been talking about uh, what is news, asking that question, and uh, I've um, run through some uh, examples of what is news and what isn't news uh, before just talking a little bit about the, the sacrifices that some journalists have made for this uh, um, valuable thing that is news. Um, so you remember uh, what we said about news? We said that news is new, surprise, surprise. But it's factual, it's truthful, it's significant to a, a group of people and that it's interesting to the reader. I also asked you the question about impartiality. My, what I've asked you to do is to uh, uh, aim for it. Uh, whether it's achievable or not, I'm not really sure, to be honest. Um, so it's worth using those uh, criteria to maybe uh, look at um, today's um, news. Um, now, today, to me, is uh, a little bit different to you. I've recorded this a little while ago because we wanted to get ahead um, to ensure that we uh, were able to keep going no matter what happens with, uh, with COVID-19. Uh, so I'm looking at today's front pages, but you can do the same. If you click on the link for today's uh, news, um, there will be um, a whole number of front pages uh, to look at and uh, to start testing those um, um, uh, those characteristics against uh, what's in the news. So we've got uh, the um, at the moment, uh, the Brexit bill is going through, is going into the debate today in uh, uh, in Parliament. So there's uh, reports of what's going on with uh, with Brexit. Um, uh, there's um, more information about um, uh, COVID-19. There was a nice sunny day uh, at the weekend, so nice pictures from that. The Times, coronavirus again, and Brexit. Those are the two stories that are dominating. Uh, the, uh, the headlines uh, on this day. Uh, so we're looking at a, a Brexit rebellion within the Conservative Party because uh, Boris Johnson's uh, government has said that it's willing to break uh, international law in order to um, uh, overrule the, the Brexit withdrawal agreement. By the time you're looking at this, you'll probably know what the outcome of that uh, debate was. But that's not the point. The point is the, um, uh, the, the nature of those stories is that they're trying to report something new. These are, this is the latest developments. It's trying to report uh, something uh, in a factual, truthful uh, manner. And obviously, obviously this has significance to a wider community. Different kinds of newspapers reporting on different things. The, uh, the emphasis is on uh, COVID-19 uh, for the Mirror, much more colorful front page. We'll look at front pages more when we're together in some of the face-to-face -face sessions uh, and looking at the way that stories are treated differently by different types of media organizations. Um, a different COVID-19 story on the front of the te Telegraph. So again, this is revealing something new um, uh, that the, uh, the government is, being, is asking uh, GP surgeries to start to reintroduce face-to-face -face, uh, surgeries. Brexit bill over uh, in this part of the, the front page. But then some business news as well, a BBC story uh, down in the bottom right of the, uh, the page saying the BBC is being uh, is looking to axe uh, the number of meetings it has. Um, as you know, they've got a new uh, director general, so the new director general is, uh, is clearly uh, making some changes. So that's a new, truthful, factual story. Daily Mail, um, no doubt we'll talk about the Daily Mail at some point, uh, but uh, you'll see it's COVID-19 uh, is the uh, main story for them. Uh, hospital admissions for seven major non-COVID illnesses down by 173,000. So they're looking at the impact on other types of illness uh, that COVID-19 has had. So bringing in new uh, figures. So uh, their health editor has got access to new figures. Uh, so they've, they've got uh, facts in there. It's, it's new um, and it is of interest to a wider community, i.e. to all of us. Express, um, again, they're looking at uh, the impact on cancer treatments uh, of COVID-19. Is a different COVID story uh, from uh, the Metro, uh, a uh, student who was fined £10,000 for breaking uh, COVID rules. Uh, so they've got a very different uh, take on the COVID story. But again, it's new and interesting to a wide group of people. Now, which group of people you um, are trying to interest, of course, depends on uh, your readership. So the star, always worth a look at the star. Um, they always take a slightly more light-hearted view of the world. Um, so uh, they've got a story uh, about um, uh, 
pets being abandoned during uh, coronavirus uh, lockdown. So they've taken a sort of light-hearted approach and put a mask on a picture of a parrot. Whether you like that approach or not um, is uh, sort of irrelevant. Uh, it's whether they can sell newspapers or and um, get an advertising revenue uh, from their online audience and uh, they do pretty well on that. So um, it's not really a matter of your personal taste, it comes down to what works uh, within um, uh, the industry. Financial Times looking at the uh, impact of wildfires in uh, America as well as some other business news. So that's um, what's going on today but you, hopefully you can see uh, from all of that that um, those uh, uh, front pages pretty much hit all the nail on the head for all of those uh, characteristics. New sto uh, the stories are new, factual, true, significant, interesting, and impartial. So that's uh, it for today's uh, lecture. Um, I'll be seeing you at the workshop for some more news writing exercises and we can get stuck into um, uh, developing those uh, news writing skills. Uh, I'll see you then.